Curiosity often leads us down dark alleys. In the case of Pablo Escobar, the alley is not just dark, it's sinister and bloodstained. Imagine a world where innocence is a commodity and cruelty a commonplace. This is the story of 49 lives snuffed out by a man who ruled with fear and fascination. But who was this man, really? Let's peel back the layers of Colombia's most infamous drug lord and unearth the roots of his brutal legacy. Pablo Escobar, the Kingpin's Background Pablo Escobar, a name synonymous with drug trafficking, terror, and opulence, was born on December 1, 1949 in Rio Negro, Colombia. Raised in the nearby city of Medellin, Escobar's story is not just one of criminality, but also a reflection of Colombia's societal disparities and the allure of power. From his humble beginnings, Escobar's ambition was evident. Early criminal activities, including petty street scams and car theft, marked his entry into the world of crime. However, it wasn't until he tapped into the burgeoning cocaine trade in the 1970s that Escobar began his ascent to infamy. The cocaine market was booming, especially in the United States, and Escobar, with a mix of ruthlessness and shrewdness, quickly established himself as a major player. His cartel, known as the Medellin Cartel, became the dominant force in the global cocaine trade. By the mid-1980s, it was estimated that the cartel controlled more than 80% of the cocaine shipped to the U.S., earning Escobar the title of the King of Cocaine. Escobar's wealth was staggering. Forbes magazine listed him as one of the world's richest men multiple times. He owned luxurious homes, private jets, and even a private zoo. His Hacienda Napoles estate was infamous for its opulence. But Escobar's empire was built on blood. He was notorious for his plata o plomo, silver or lead philosophy, except his bribes or face bullets. His reign saw the rise of narco-terrorism, a campaign of bombings, assassinations, and indiscriminate violence aimed at maintaining his cartel's supremacy and thwarting extradition efforts by the Colombian government and its American allies. One of Escobar's most audacious acts was the bombing of Avianca Flight 203 in 1989, killing all 107. People on board in an attempt to assassinate a presidential candidate who supported extradition. His war against the state reached its peak with the siege of the Colombian Supreme Court in 1985, resulting in the death of half of its judges. In 1991, facing mounting pressure, Escobar surrendered to Colombian authorities. However, his imprisonment was a farce. He was confined to a luxurious prison he built himself, La Catedral, complete with a casino, spa, and nightclub. His reign from prison continued until his escape in 1992, which led to a nationwide manhunt. Escobar's influence extended beyond the criminal world. He fashioned himself as a Robin Hood figure, building houses and football fields for the poor in Medellin. This garnered him significant local support, further complicating efforts to capture him. His death on December 2, 1993, in a shootout with Colombian National Police, marked the end of an era. However, the legacy of Pablo Escobar extends beyond his death. He left behind a Colombia scarred by violence and corruption, a world where the allure of quick wealth through illegal means had devastating consequences. The Allure of Innocence in the labyrinthine narrative of Pablo Escobar's reign, one of the most disturbing facets was his reported obsession with young, virginal girls. This predilection wasn't just a personal perversion, it was a twisted pillar of his empire, reflecting deeper societal issues and the dark underbelly of power abuse. Escobar's attraction to innocence can be traced to a complex interplay of power, control, and a perverted sense of purity. In his world, where everything was obtainable, the innocence of youth became a prized trophy. This obsession was not unique to Escobar, but was emblematic of a broader societal issue in Colombia, where disparities in wealth and power often translated into exploitation of the vulnerable. The young girls, often between 14 and 17, came predominantly from impoverished backgrounds in Medellin's barrios. For them, the enticement wasn't just Escobar's wealth, 
but the promise of escape from a life of destitution. The allure was twofold. The fantasy of being lifted into a life of luxury and the fear-induced respect for the most powerful man in Colombia. To feed his obsession, Escobar employed a network of young, handsome men, his so-called hunting agents. These agents, adept at manipulation, scoured the city for girls who fit Escobar's criteria. Young, beautiful, and above all, virgins. The process was systematic and predatory. They wooed these girls with promises of love, gifts, and a glimpse of the high life, only to lead them into Escobar's clutches. Once in Escobar's orbit, the girls were subjected to a world that was at once luxurious and horrific. They were showered with gifts, attended lavish parties, and introduced to a lifestyle they had never imagined. But this opulence came with a price. The initiation into Escobar's world often involved a violent loss of innocence, a brutal reminder of their vulnerability and Escobar's absolute power. The psychological impact on these young girls was profound. Many were trapped in a cycle of fear, dependency, and abuse, unable to escape. Their stories, largely untold, are poignant reminders of the human cost of Escobar's reign. This dark aspect of Escobar's life also reflects the societal norms of Colombia at the time, where the value of young women was often measured by their purity and beauty. In this context, Escobar's actions, though extreme, were an amplification of existing societal prejudices and power dynamics. The irony of Escobar's obsession with innocence was its stark contrast to the life he led. A man who built an empire on bloodshed and fear, yet sought purity and innocence in his personal life, presents a complex psychological portrait. It was as if, through these young girls, Escobar was attempting to cling to a semblance of virtue in a life otherwise devoid of it. The media played a crucial role in both sensationalizing and condemning Escobar's actions. Stories of his encounters with young virgins were laced with a mixture of horror and fascination. This coverage not only brought international attention to his crimes, but also shed light on the plight of the girls, turning them into tragic figures in the narco-trafficking saga. However, despite the media's focus, the true stories of these girls often remained in the shadows, overshadowed by the larger-than-life figure of Escobar. Their voices, muted by fear and societal disregard, tell a tale of innocence lost, not just at the hands of a man, but by a society that often turned a blind eye to their suffering. The Recruitment Process In the twisted world of Pablo Escobar, the recruitment of young virgins was an orchestrated process, a dark operation that spoke volumes about his manipulative prowess and the vulnerabilities of Colombian society. This chapter delves into the harrowing steps of how these young girls were systematically targeted, lured, and ensnared into Escobar's web. The first step in this macabre process was identifying potential victims. Escobar's agents, often young, charismatic, and street smart, scoured the impoverished neighborhoods of Medellin, searching for girls who met their boss's specific criteria, young, innocent, and often struggling with poverty. These neighborhoods, riddled with hardship, provided a fertile hunting ground where dreams of a better life could easily be exploited. Once a target was identified, these agents would employ their charm and promises of a better life to gain the trust of these young girls. They painted vivid pictures of luxury and escape, promises of wealth and a life far removed from the struggles of their current existence. For many of these girls, the prospect of escaping poverty was a powerful motivator, blinding them to the dangers that lay ahead. The grooming process was a calculated blend of kindness and manipulation. Gifts, attention, and the illusion of romance were used to build a bond between the recruiter and the girl. This phase was critical in ensuring the girl's compliance and in laying the groundwork for her eventual submission to Escobar. The recruiters, adept at deception, played the role of caring suitors, all the while steering their targets towards an ominous fate. Once a girl was deemed ready, she would be introduced to Pablo Escobar. This meeting was often portrayed as an honor, a chance to meet one of the most powerful men in Colombia. Escobar, with his charismatic persona, could be charming and persuasive, 
further disarming the girls' defenses. It was during this encounter that the true nature of their recruitment would become brutally clear. Despite the underlying coercion, an illusion of choice was often maintained. Escobar's approach was to present himself as a benefactor, offering these girls a chance to be part of his world. In reality, this was a carefully constructed trap. Once in his grasp, the girls found themselves caught in a situation from which escape was nearly impossible. The success of this recruitment process was, in part, due to the societal and cultural context of Colombia at the time. In a society where drug lords like Escobar were both feared and revered, the power dynamics were heavily skewed. The glorification of narco culture, combined with deep-rooted poverty and inequality, created an environment where the exploitation of the vulnerable was not just possible, but often overlooked. Another disturbing aspect of this process was the silence and complicity that surrounded it. In many cases, the families of these girls, either out of fear or desperation, turned a blind eye. The local community, aware of Escobar's power and ruthlessness, often chose silence over confrontation. This collective inaction played a crucial role in perpetuating the cycle of abuse. For the girls who were swept up in this process, the end game was invariably tragic. Whether it was a descent into a life of abuse and fear, or, in the worst cases, becoming casualties of Escobar's violent world, the outcome was a stark testament to the cruelty of their exploitation. The Brutal Reality the Massacre of the Virgins. The story of Pablo Escobar's reign is drenched in blood and terror, but perhaps nothing exemplifies its brutality more than the Massacre of the Virgins, a series of chilling events that unfolded with a ferocity that still haunts Colombia. It began as whispers in the streets of Medellin, rumors of young girls disappearing, never to be seen again. The truth was far more horrifying. These girls, lured into Escobar's orbit under false pretenses, found themselves trapped in a nightmare from which there was no escape. The Massacre of the Virgins wasn't a singular event, but a series of killings spread over time, each one a stark symbol of Escobar's ruthless control. The extent of this tragedy came to light in a most gruesome manner. Bodies of young women, barely in their teens, were found scattered across the northern regions of Colombia. The scenes were horrifying, the victims bore signs of torture, and their deaths were vicious and calculated. Many were left in public places, a grim message of intimidation and power from Escobar. Investigations revealed a chilling pattern in these murders. Many victims were shot multiple times, their bodies marked with crosses formed by bullet wounds, a signature of sorts. This ritualistic element suggested a deeper, more sinister motive behind these killings beyond just silencing those who might betray Escobar. The victims were the same young, innocent girls who had once been seduced by promises of a better life. Their backgrounds varied, but they shared common threads of vulnerability and exploitation. These were not just nameless faces, they were daughters, sisters, and friends, each with a story cut tragically short. The massacre left deep scars on the communities from which these girls were taken. Families were left to mourn in a state of helplessness and fear, their losses compounded by the stigma and silence that often surrounded the victims of Escobar's violence. The societal impact was profound, instilling a pervasive sense of dread and distrust. While Escobar was the orchestrator, these heinous acts were carried out by his loyal foot soldiers. These men, desensitized to violence and loyal to Escobar's orders, played a direct role in the abduction, torture, and murder of the girls. Their complicity paints a grim picture of the depths of human depravity under the influence of power and fear. The Colombian government and police, already struggling against the overwhelming power of the Medellin cartel, found themselves grappling with a crisis of unprecedented horror. The investigation into these murders was fraught with challenges, from the fear of retaliation to the corruption that permeated the system. Despite these obstacles, some brave souls within the police force persisted, determined to bring justice to the victims. The massacre of the virgins was not an anomaly, but rather a reflection of the broader issues plaguing Colombian society at the time. It highlighted the pervasive influence of narco culture, the stark social inequalities, and the vulnerability of the marginalized. 
This event forced a national introspection, questioning the societal norms that allowed such atrocities to occur. Decades later, the Massacre of the Virgins remains a dark chapter in Colombia's history. It serves as a haunting reminder of the human cost of the drug trade and the catastrophic impact of a single man's ambition. The stories of these young women, lost in the vortex of Escobar's empire, continue to resonate, a somber testament to the brutality of unchecked power and the fragility of innocence. The Survivor's Tales In the shadow of Pablo Escobar's ruthless regime, where countless young lives were extinguished, a few survived. Their stories, marked by horror and resilience, offer a rare, humanizing glimpse into the terror of Escobar's world. This chapter is dedicated to their voices, the tales of those who miraculously lived through the nightmare. The survivors, mostly young women who had narrowly escaped death, carried with them not just the physical scars of their ordeal, but deep psychological wounds. Their narratives are not just accounts of survival, but testimonies to the enduring impact of trauma. Each story is unique, yet bound by a common thread of fear, betrayal, and a loss of innocence. For these survivors, life under Escobar was a constant dance with death. Some recount being witnesses to the brutal murders of their friends, forced to remain silent under the threat of a similar fate. Others speak of the daily terror of living in Escobar's clutches, knowing that any day could be their last. The tales of escape when they occurred were often as harrowing as the captivity. Some survivors managed to flee during the chaos of police raids, while others were released when they were no longer of use to Escobar. These escapes were not just physical liberations, but also desperate attempts to reclaim a semblance of their former selves. Reintegration into society was a daunting challenge for the survivors. Stigmatized by their association with Escobar and traumatized by their experiences, many found it difficult to resume normal lives. Some struggled with mental health issues, while others faced rejection from their families and communities. In many cases, the survivors chose silence, an attempt to leave behind a past too painful to revisit. This silence was often enforced by the stigma associated with being a part of Escobar's world, a societal mark that was difficult to erase. For some, this meant a life of anonymity, forever haunted by memories they dared not share. For those who found the courage to speak, support systems played a crucial role. A few found solace in family and friends, while others turned to support groups and counseling. These support systems were not just sources of comfort, but crucial for their journey towards healing and recovery. The quest for justice was a common theme in the survivors' stories. Many expressed a desire for accountability, not just for Escobar, but for the entire network that enabled the atrocities. However, in a system riddled with corruption and fear, true justice often remained elusive, leaving many to grapple with unresolved anger and loss. Despite the unimaginable horrors they endured, many survivors displayed remarkable resilience. Their stories are not just narratives of victimhood, but also of strength and the human spirit's capacity to endure. Some even became advocates for victims of violence, drawing on their experiences to help others. The tales of the survivors form an essential part of the narrative of Escobar's reign. They serve as a counterpoint to the glorification of narco-culture, offering a stark reminder of the human cost of the drug trade. Their stories, steeped in pain and survival, challenge us to look beyond the sensationalism of Escobar's life to the real, human consequences of his actions. The Investigation and Fallout the investigation into the horrific massacre of young virgins by Pablo Escobar and the subsequent fallout was a complex, harrowing journey that revealed the depths of corruption, fear, and violence in Colombia. It was a journey that would test the resilience of the nation and its pursuit of justice. As the magnitude of Escobar's crimes became apparent, Colombian authorities, often in collaboration with international agencies, embarked on a relentless pursuit of justice. This was more than a hunt for a notorious drug lord. It was an attempt to untangle a web of crime so heinous they had shaken the nation to its core. Investigators faced numerous obstacles. Escobar's network was vast and deeply embedded in various facets of Colombian society. Corruption within law enforcement and the judiciary made the pursuit of justice an uphill battle. 
Witnesses were scarce, as fear of retribution from Escobar's henchmen was palpable. Evidence was often tampered with, and in some cases, key leads mysteriously disappeared. Breaking through the wall of silence was a critical breakthrough in the investigation. Informants, often risking their lives, provided crucial insights into the workings of Escobar's cartel and his role in the massacres. These testimonies, though fraught with danger, were instrumental in piecing together the puzzle of Escobar's reign of terror. The investigation took on an international dimension as the United States and other countries joined the fray. The global nature of Escobar's drug network necessitated this international cooperation, which brought additional resources and expertise to the challenging task. As the investigation progressed, the Colombian public was exposed to the brutal realities of Escobar's regime. This exposure brought a mix of outrage, fear, and introspection. It forced Colombians to confront the dark underbelly of the narco culture that had permeated their society. Securing justice in the case of the massacred virgins was fraught with setbacks. The judicial system, struggling under the weight of corruption and intimidation, found it challenging to hold those responsible accountable. The few trials that did occur were often marred by threats and irregularities, underscoring the deep-rooted challenges in Colombia's legal framework. The media played a critical role in the investigation and its fallout. Journalists, often at great personal risk, brought the stories of the victims to light, keeping public attention focused on the need for justice. However, the sensational coverage also raised ethical questions about the portrayal of violence and victimhood. Escobar's death in 1993, while bringing a degree of closure, did not end the quest for justice. It left many questions unanswered and many crimes unresolved. The power vacuum left by his demise led to further violence, as factions within the cartel vied for control. The investigation into Escobar's atrocities and the subsequent fallout left an indelible mark on Colombia. It exposed the fragility of the nation's institutions and the pervasive influence of narco-trafficking. Yet it also showcased the resilience of the Colombian people and their unwavering quest for justice, even in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds. The Dark Legacy and Reflections on Escobar's Reign The dark legacy of Pablo Escobar, particularly the tragic saga of the 49 murdered virgins, casts a long shadow over Colombia's history. This chapter delves into the broader implications of Escobar's reign, examining how his actions and their aftermath have shaped Colombian society, culture, and politics. Escobar's reign of terror left an indelible mark on Colombian society. The massacre of the virgins in particular highlighted the vulnerabilities of the marginalized and the ease with which they could be exploited in a society riddled with inequality. This period forced a national reckoning with issues of poverty, corruption, and the rule of law, sparking debates and initiatives aimed at addressing these deep-seated problems. The narrative of Escobar's life and crimes, including the haunting story of the young victims, has permeated Colombian culture. It has influenced art, literature, and cinema, often sparking controversy over the glorification of narco culture versus the need to confront and understand this dark chapter in the nation's history. Escobar's actions and the government's response to his cartel significantly impacted Colombia's political landscape. The struggle against Escobar and his network led to changes in law enforcement and judicial processes, as well as shifts in political attitudes towards crime, drug trafficking, and cooperation with international agencies. The economic implications of Escobar's drug empire were far-reaching. While his operations brought immense wealth, they also contributed to a distorted economy, with illicit drug money influencing legitimate businesses and financial systems. The aftermath of his reign saw efforts to cleanse the economy of narco-dollars and rebuild sectors that had been overshadowed by the drug trade. Internationally, Escobar's reign and the plight of his victims shaped the perception of Colombia as a hotspot for drug trafficking and violence. This image has had lasting effects on international relations, trade, and tourism, with Colombia working hard to overcome the stigma and showcase its diverse culture, history, and economic potential. Escobar's era underscored the challenges of combating narco-trafficking. 
The lessons learned from this period have informed Colombia's ongoing battle against drug cartels, with strategies evolving to address not just the supply chain, but also the social and economic factors that fuel the trade. The psychological impact on Colombians has been profound. For many, the era of Escobar is a traumatic memory, a time of fear, loss, and uncertainty. The stories of the virgins, in particular, have left a psychological imprint, serving as a grim reminder of the human cost of the drug war. In response to the horrors of Escobar's regime, Colombia has seen significant legal and ethical reforms. These include stronger measures against corruption, enhanced witness protection programs, and initiatives to support the victims of drug-related violence. Finally, the legacy of Escobar's reign has been a catalyst for a broader conversation about healing and reconciliation. Efforts to acknowledge and remember the victims, including the young girls, have been crucial in this process. Memorials, public discussions, and support for survivors and their families are all part of Colombia's journey towards coming to terms with its past.